So hopefully we will have millions of women right. are watching the, um, the EU referendum roll on. So this is your time to pitch to women. Right. Why, why should we be voting to stay in? Well, I think it's all about our economic security and the security for every person and every family in our country. I profoundly believe that we'll be better off if we stay in a reformed European Union in terms of jobs and growth and the financial security that brings. And I think we'll be worse off if we leave. Um, and I think that should be a great concern to people. But there's also a huge opportunity. If you're young and growing up in Britain, this is a great country to live in. We're creating jobs and you have the great opportunity to live and work and travel in other European countries. And I want people's opportunities to be bigger, the opportunity to study at other universities, to work in other countries, to work for companies that trade and do business all over Europe. That's the opportunity and the security that I think this referendum is all about. Are there specific benefits to women, though, for being in Europe rather than out of Europe? Well, there are safeguards in terms of uh, the rights uh, for, for working people. I mean, I would argue in Britain we've gone further than the safeguards that are there on things like um, shared um, maternity leave mm -hmm. and things like paid holidays, but that's a safeguard people know are there. But I would say the, what greater purpose is there than being part of an organisation that is going to create jobs and livelihoods and wealth and prosperity for our country? Uh, that's the most important thing. And you know, I think really what the argument comes down to is even I think many of the Leave campaigners accept there would be a hit to the economy if we were to leave. Mm -hmm. So what is the benefit that would make that hit worthwhile. Now they say it's something about control, but if you leave and the European Union still exists, which it would, you've still got to meet all its rules when you sell your goods and your mm. services into that market. So you don't gain control, you lose control. So I think the whole leave argument collapses mm. when you really look at it. You pay a price and what do you get in return? Really nothing you can put your finger on. But you were saying about obviously the safeguarding being in place for women being in Europe. Are you saying that if we left Europe, those safeguards wouldn't be there? Or? Well, if we left Europe, obviously the safeguards, the, the flaws, um, you know, the, the guarantees about workers' rights wouldn't necessarily be there. You don't know what a future uh, government might do. But I would say it's a positive case I want to make. We are mm. a stronger economy in this market of 500 million people. I think we can get more things done around the world as part of a team of countries working together, whether that's climate change, whether that's fighting for women's rights on the other side of the world, whether it's trying to stop uh, FGM, whether it's trying to make sure we educate women uh, and girls in, in, in countries the world over. We magnify our force. Mm. The idea that we reduce our country by being in the European Union, I think is wrong. I think, and I see this as Prime Minister for the last six years, we get more things done, we're able to act and we have greater power in acting as part of a group of countries. In terms of immigration, obviously this is mm. the hottest topic mm. for almost everyone who seems to be talking about it. Do you feel that this is something, do you worry that this is something you'll lose the election on? And why haven't you made a more positive case for immigration? Well, it is an important topic. I mean, first of all, half, more than half of immigration to the UK comes from outside mm. the EU, so the European referendum has got nothing to do with that. Mm. Inside the European Union, British people have a right to go and work in France or Germany or Italy or Spain or wherever. And Spanish and French and other European nationals have the right to come and work in Britain. That is part of the single market. Mm -hmm. And my argument would be that getting out of the single market and ending that practice would so damage our economy that we'd see fewer jobs, we'd see a smaller economy, we'd see lower living standards, we'd probably see higher prices and higher mortgage rates. And that is uh, not a, that we shouldn't be trashing our economy in order to try and control migration. What we've done instead mm. is say, look, if someone wants to come from another European country and work here, they have to be working or supporting themselves. If they can't support themselves, we can remove them. And they have to work here for four years before they get full access to our generous in-work welfare system. So they're going to be paying in before they get out. And actually, that is positive mm. for our economy rather than negative. Well, I understand that, but I think a lot of it is obviously part of what you're talking about is bringing that migration total down from the 300,000 to the tens of thousands, you know, under 100,000. And that still feels a bit of a negative message. It's still saying we want to reduce it, whereas a lot of people who are potentially voting to remain are actually, you know, from immigrant families yeah. themselves. So where's the kind of positive story about I think about there's, look, there's a hugely positive story about the contribution people mm. make to our country. There are 
50,000 European nationals working in our NHS as doctors and nurses and helping to, to treat us. There are 60,000 European nationals working in our care homes, and I see that in my own constituency. You know how that's covered in the Daily Mail, though, sometimes. No, no, but look, positive. well, you wouldn't feel if you're, you know, if you have a relative with dementia in a care home and you've got brilliant Spanish carers looking after him mm. or her, you'd be glad that they were there. So, of course, lots of people come to our country and make a contribution. Um, I have a final question. If you win the referendum, which is obviously a very big mandate from the country mm. that you've done the right thing, would you consider standing again for Prime Minister? No, I won't. <laughs> I, I made a decision, which I think, you know, two full terms as Prime Minister um, is uh, quite a long time. And I've got plenty of energy and oomph for the job. Uh, there's a lot I want to do. But I think at the end of that, uh, I think it'd be time for a uh, fresh, uh, fresh approach. Would you be worried that if you won the referendum and then a person who led the, the Leave campaign then took over as the leader of the Conservative Party? Well, it won't be my choice. I mean, mm. when I stand down, the Conservative Party will have to choose a new leader. Mm. And uh, it's not... Um, you know, it's not, a, it's not a title you pass on to your successor. <laughs> know, you know, so it won't be for me to decide. But look, I think this question about Europe goes beyond individual political mm. parties. And what's interesting about my team in this referendum campaign is that it's the Green Party, the Liberal Democrats, the Labour Party, the Conservative government, the trade unions, the leader of which was speaking today as was we're meeting, um, the CBI, businesses, large mm. and small, uh, a lot of voluntary bodies and organisations that care about environmental issues. I feel we've got a very big mm -hmm. coalition uh, of people, parties, and people who've never voted for any party who think that it's the right thing to do to stay. Do your kids quiz you about it? Are they <laughs> do. They're quite interested in it, actually. Um, and uh, they, they sort of, you know, to them, I mean, they're only 12 and 10 and 5. I'm not sure my 5-year-old's got a total <laughs> handle on it, but my 12-year-old and 10-year-old just sort of, well, of course, you know, we, we've got to be in these things, you know, isn't it? They, they sort of, they take that, they take mm. that sort of approach of, uh, of thinking, well, you know, uh, it's about opportunities and sort of, of course, we're, we're part of Europe, we've got to get on and... Do yeah. they ever play devil's advocate, devil's advocate with you? Um, they haven't so far, <laughs> but they're quite capable of... Um, <laughs> they're they're certainly capable you. of taking their father down a peg or two. That is, they specialise in that uh, at every available opportunity. And long may that continue. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Pleasure.